I'm eating, and this is done by collaborating with Vedantin here, Gloria, Frida. And uh, we are trying to show some preliminary result on the relationship between health and democracy. So, uh, in many places in the world, we really want to improve the population health, we want to reduce the infant mortality rates, we want to increase the life expectancy. But the problem is that we don't really know whether democracy really lead to the improvement of these good outcomes. So in political science, we scholars haven't reached a consensus on whether this is what democracy can really do, whether democracy can really lead to this improvement on health. So some people say yes, because democracy should be more responsible to the need of their people. So are more likely to spend more on providing food, providing health facility, so in democracy, we should see the improvement of health. But some people say no, it's the most important reason is not democracy, but the quality of governance. That should be the uh, factor that has the most impact on the health outcome. So with the VDAN data, we have Yeah, sorry. So with VDAN data, we have a better measure, we have more detailed measure to uh, measure the concept of democracy. So we would like to know, uh, because there are different distinct features of democracy, we want to know which feature that has a little this good outcome have the impact on the improvement of health. And we also like to know if the effect, the positive effect of democracy on health is what is different in rich and in poor country. So first, we uh, based on uh, factor analysis, we found there are five distinct uh, features of democracy, and these five uh, distinct features are free and fair election, or party of election, whether elections are free and fair and competitive, and institutional check and balance, especially power of legislature, parliamentary power, and civil liberties, equality, and judicial control. These are the five distinct features of democracy that we found. And uh, this five dimension, they do not necessarily co-vary, so some countries may have high score on one of the dimension, but do not have a uh, high score on other dimension. Um, so for example, if a country have high score on free and fair election, uh, we might expect that in that country we don't see vote buying, uh, there's no electoral uh, violence, no intimidation. Uh, in country have high score on check and balance, we should ex expect that they have strong parliament and uh, uh, opposition parties are more likely to be able to question and investigate the incumbent. And uh, like the dimension of equality that captured the uh, redistribution policy, and also whether in the country the power distribution across social group is equal or not. So based on this five distinct dimension, we'd like to find out, to explore whether they have some impact on indicators of health. So first we try to see whether they have some impact on public health expenditure. And we found that the dimension of equality, it contributes a lot on public health expenditure. We also find that free and fair election, uh, the quality of election, also have some uh, significant in, in positive effect on that. And in terms of life expectancy and infant mortality rates, we found that check and balance, parliamentary power, and free and fair election and equality those dimensions, they all improve these important indicators of health. And we also want to know if this good effect, if this positive effect of democracy on health, whether the effect are consistent across country. So um, in this graph, the x-axis is the level of quality of election, and the y-axis is the infant mortality rates, and the blue like capture uh, the relationship between the two in rich country and the red line capture the relationship in poor country. So we found that in general the quality of the election uh, reduce infant mortality rates. But the most interesting thing is that this effect is especially strong in poor country. And this graph shows a similar pattern, but the x-axis is the parliamentary power or institutional check and balance, and the y-axis is life expectancy. So we found that the same in poor country, the effect of democracy on health is especially significant. 
But that doesn't mean that uh, in rich country, uh, democracy is not important. We might we, we can imagine that okay in poor country in rich country that people have more private resources, so they can spend their resources on their own health. And even though the state may not provide infrastructure, but they still have their own resources to improve their health. But in poor country, uh, we might think that the democracy is really necessary to push a politician to provide some benefits to their citizen, to spend money, to provide health care, to provide good food, so that in poor country would find this uh, effect of democracy especially strong. However, in one of our indicators of health, which is the public health expenditure, we find that it effect is very similar in poor and in rich country. So we find it's a level of check and balance and uh, the equality dimension. So in both poor and uh, poor and rich country, increase the level of check and balance, increase the level of equality redistribution policy, we find the increased uh, spending on public health. So in general, what we found saying that democratization, democracy is a good thing and it's have positive effect on the quality of life. And uh, there are different features of de democracy and different features have different effects. But the most important is that we found uh, in poor country, the positive effect of democracy on health is especially important. Thank you.